This is a Momentum Media production. Property Finance Uncut, the must listen podcast for anyone with a mortgage. Find out the truth about what Australia's lenders are up to and how to make sure you're in the best possible position when it comes to your property finance. Okay, oh, hey guys, Phil Tarrant, host of the Smart Property Investment Show. Welcome to Property Finance Uncut. We get together once a month when the Reserve Bank of Australia meets. That cadence may change moving forward because, as we know, from February 2024, the Reserve Bank is going to meet monthly anymore. It's going to be a different cadence moving ahead, but we still have 2023 to play out. Let's get stuck into what's happening with mortgages and finance. Paul Glossop is the CEO of Finney Mortgages, finney.com.au. Paul, you well, mate? Like very well. It's a bit of a scorcher out there in the uh, the Sydney as well as Victorian markets uh, as we record this, but um, some respite for mortgage holders uh, for the time being from what we've just seen from Michelle Bullock. That's right. Uh, interest rates on hold are uh, largely anticipated and uh, accepted that this will be the norm largely moving forward. You get these uh, press releases out on the morning of um, the first Tuesday of every month with, you know, 57% of economists think this and uh, uh, elsewise, I think largely now, Paul, uh, consideration. Not many people are calling for further interest rate rises. What are you hearing? It's it's an interesting one because, yeah, if we had this conversation only a week ago, um, I would certainly be aligned to saying, yeah, look, we're probably going to see cuts coming early 2024. I think that was a position up until the latest inflation data was released. Um, that probably sh- showed a slightly unexpected tick up, but I think a lot of that was due to the increase in fuel prices. So, I think the, the reality is majority of, of the economists and, and banks are now tipping up. Uh, Look, there's a couple who are saying there might still be one more rise before the decline starts, but um, the rate cuts are likely still to be in 2024. When in 2024, I think the next three months in particular leading up to Christmas will um, will really indicate what's going to happen there. But the one thing that hasn't changed over the last probably six months in particular is the property market has been resolute. And by resolute, you mean it's not? dropping as some people anticipated or expected. It's uh, as strong as it was this this most recent drop we've had in prices. Yeah, exactly, Matt. And I think that's probably been, for some, um, probably expecting uh, that you know, with, with essentially 4% increase uh, in the cash rate over the last 18 months, um, the expectation was that we would see a, quite a significant reduction in prices. Now, that obviously, as you see interest rates increase, typically what that's going to mean is that borrowers capacity to spend more or apply for finance and extract money out to actually buy assets uh, starts to become depleted. But um, we've seen prices drop on average somewhere between 7 and 12%, depending on which market we were honing in on. But almost right across the board now, uh, across Australia, we're pretty much bang on where our previous peak was only uh, probably the best part of 20, 22 months ago now. So, with interest rates still at their highest level in over a decade um, and the expectation that we're going to see interest rate cuts within potentially 12 months' time, prices increasing circa 10% in the last 12 months, um, well, I would expect that if we, as and when we do see rate cuts, anyone who's sitting on the sidelines, you're just going to see that asset prices will likely increase in that time. Yeah, it's, a, it's a really interesting market. Uh, access to finance is, again, the, the key contributing factor to you know, whether or not markets will accelerate uh, moving forward. I was chatting with the shadow treasurer the other day and he said to me, he goes, Phil, mate, if it wasn't for migration, we would be in a recession. And we see the numbers coming through and the commitments of the current government towards uh, migration moving forward, which is going to put positive pressure if you're a home, if you're a property investor, positive pressure on prices moving forward. And if that sort of interfaces with the softening of, of interest rates, you're going to see markets run. But what I do here and know, Paul, is that there's uh, still half a million Australians thereabouts still to come off uh, very low fixed rates. What impact is that going to have, mate? You're right, buddy. Um, I think the, the precise numbers circa 550,000 mortgage holders in Australia are still yet to come off that um, that fixed rate position that a lot of them would have taken at those very, very cheap interest rate positions of 2020, 2021. So, the fact of the matter is we've still got probably 12 to 14 months of time to play out for those additional 550,000 mortgage holders to go from a fixed rate of somewhere in the high ones to mid twos to probably more of a retail rate of somewhere around about six, six and a half percent. 
that that will still take time to figure out what the, that washout of that's going to be. But something that is quite interesting is that there's already been well over 850,000 mortgage holders who have gone from fixed to variable or fixed to another fixed rates and those ultra low rates to now more of the, the current market rates. Um, and in that same time, as we just discussed, the actual property prices across Australia over the last 12 months have actually rebounded and, and joined their previous peak. So, what will happen as and when we see that 550,000 additional mortgage holders go from fixed to potential variable or refinance their debts? I think it's going to be much the same because of what you mentioned uh, earlier, Phil, is the fact that we're still a very strong migration and that's going to prop up uh, essentially, where demand for housing, be it rental or the actual, actual purchasing side of things, is going to be. There's been a bit of a, a I guess, a pre spring uh, listing increase, but I don't think it's necessarily going to dictate terms too much because it looks like the actual amount of property is getting absorbed. The big thing that mortgage holders can do, however, is especially those 550,000 fixed rate holders, is now is the time to consider how do you get that mortgage to the best rate, best structure even potentially now to consider extracting equity from that loan that you have or that asset that you have because of the fact that prices drop now have rebounded and are still consistently seeing 0.5 to, in some cases, 1% increase monthly. How do you refinance to position yourself best to get the best rate, take off any pressure from a a repayment perspective, and even potentially consider how do you extract equity? Because valuations have probably improved quite markedly in the last 6 to 12 months as well. It's, I was going to ask you, is this a message around refinancing or is this a message around uh, to get a better rate or more appropriate rate coming off fixed rates or is this more about capitalising on opportunities, particularly uh, for, for property investors? And and you're saying that it's both uh, and that mm-hmm. can be uh, compl- complicated, but um, some of the numbers I've seen coming out is that the impact of those fixed rates coming off uh, onto you know, higher rates or, or higher interest-only rates um, hasn't been as exacerbated as what a lot of the commentators uh, thought uh, at the time. Um, is that largely, you think, as a result of people curbing spending? And that was very much the logic between or, or behind rising interest rates? I think it is, mate. It's, it's probably that combination and, and it's probably hard to pinpoint where it is. One thing's for sure is that obviously mortgages and rents are not cheaper than what they were 12 months ago. They certainly are more expensive. Um, things that are starting to show that that discretionary spending curve is, is definitely the retail sector and, and that typically is that that forward indicator. And I think that's been on a, on a decline quite consistently uh, since this time last year, if not a bit earlier. Um, but then there's the things which we see that most don't have control of, which is their energy bills, which is the, the cost of fuel and a range of other things there. But I think people are now starting to realise that the message is curtail your spending. Australians historically do not curtail their spending on rents or mortgage repayments. They're always usually the best out of making sure that they are prioritised. But I think to your probably earlier question, is this a message about refinancing or getting the best rate and restructuring, um, it's probably that time which we don't see very often in the property market that if you actually hold property, um, it's probably actually that time now where you've got three things to to actually consider. One of which is, are you actually getting the best rate? Because there is a huge difference on fixed rates versus variable or even one variable versus another or variable versus fixed rates in the future for two, three, four years. So, rates actually aren't the same where previous four or five years, you could go to the big four and basically shop around and it might be 0.1, 0.2% difference. You're talking potentially 0.4, 0.5% difference. And if you're holding a you know, $500,000 debt as an example, you could be talking two or $3,000 a year after tax that you're wasting or literally giving to one bank versus another who would be far more competitive. But the second part is this valuation component because it's very rare when you've got the ability to refinance and get a better rate, but also extract equity at that same time because the market's quite strong. And then also potentially at the third prong of that approach is consider how do you position yourself with potentially a pre-approval plus equity extraction If you're an active investor looking to get into markets to take advantage of what's likely to happen over the next 12 to 24 months. And that's really where a good investment broker has that conversation. They're not just looking at one dimension. They're considering what's the next step, what's the step after that step. Let's position you now so you can take advantage of all those next opportunities that are going to arise. So, what I'm hearing, if you haven't spoken to your mortgage broker for some time or you don't have a mortgage broker, it's probably time to actually 
check in, connect in, and start looking at your finances, whether it's a refinance and prepare for coming off fixed rates versus uh, if you are a property investor and you do have significant property holdings and or you've had your own occupier property for some time, you've probably got some equity in there. So if you're thinking of a time to actually strike, uh, if you've got comfort and confidence around your ability to secure debt and re- re- repay debt, um, probably worthwhile dialing in, mate. How do, how do people get in touch with your team? Yeah, really simply from us at finney.com.au, F-I-N-N-I.com.au. If they click on that website, there'll be one button at the front and centre of that web page. They can get in touch with us within about uh, probably two clicks of a button. And ideally, they would be able to set up a time with us that very same day to literally go through every single part of where they are, what they're expecting, give our team a chance to then come back and structure some opportunities and scenarios, which will ideally take advantage of they're both saving them some significant amount of cash here and now, but also positioning them best for what they want to do in the future from an investment standpoint or even refinancing their owner, owner-occupier. Nice one. Uh, it's Paul Glossop, CEO of finnyfinny.com.au. Thanks for your time. Cheers, mate. Nice one. Uh, thanks for tuning in, everyone. Remember to smartpropertyinvestment.com.au, Smart Property HQ, social media if you want to keep connected with what's going on. We'll see you again next time. Until then, bye-bye. The information featured in this podcast is general in nature and does not take into consideration your financial situation or individual needs and should not be relied upon. Before making any investment, insurance, tax, property or financial planning decision, you should consult a licensed professional who can advise whether your decision is appropriate for you. Guests appearing on this podcast may have a commercial relationship with the companies mentioned.